February 8th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Mark chapter 11, from the New Testament. Now as they approached Jerusalem near Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go to the village ahead of you. As soon as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here soon. So they went and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street and untied it. Some people standing there said to them, what are you doing untying that colt? They replied as Jesus had told them and the bystanders let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Both those who went ahead and those who followed kept shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna! In the highest. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. And after looking around at everything, he went out to Bethany with the twelve since it was already late. Now the next day as they went out from Bethany, he was hungry. After noticing in the distance a fig tree with leaves, he went to see if he could find any fruit on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to them, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Then they came to Jerusalem. Jesus entered the temple area and began to drive out those who were selling and buying in the temple courts. He turned over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves, and he would not permit anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. Then he began to teach them and said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of robbers? The chief priest and the experts in the law heard it, and they considered how they could assassinate him, for they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed by his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Jesus said to them, Have faith in God. I tell you the truth, if someone says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. For this reason I tell you, whatever you pray and ask for, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven will also forgive your sins. They came again to Jerusalem while Jesus was walking in the temple courts. The chief priests, the experts in the law, and the elders came up to him and said, By what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you this authority to do these things? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. John's baptism. Was it from heaven or from people? Answer me. They discussed with one another, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Then why did you not believe him? But if we say from people, they feared the crowd, for they all considered John to be truly a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. Then Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. God, I get so frustrated. <laughs> Sorry, but I get so frustrated when people say, well, I prayed to God for such and such and he never gave it to me. So there must not be a God. It says in the Bible that if you pray for what you really want and you believe that you received it, that it will be given to you. Yeah. God, today I'm going to pray for common sense for people. <laughs> that is not what you're asking us at all. That's not what you're telling us. That's not what you're trying to teach us. God, I... Today I pray for common sense. I pray for people to really look beyond just the surface words and how they want to interpret them through their filters and really understand your word. Understand the reasons behind it, the meaning behind it, why you want us to learn these things. 
you say, if we ask for this wisdom, you will share it with us. To me, this isn't so much wisdom as, as common sense. We have to be in your will. I cannot ask for a pony tomorrow and truly believe I'm going to get a pony tomorrow unless it's part of your will. Uh, same thing holds true for finances and for jobs and relationships and for all the other situations and problems and requests that we bring before you. We can ask for all of these things and we can make sure that we add in our prayers if it is the will of you, my father. But that doesn't mean that simply because we believe that we're going to get it, that we will. Thankfully, you don't give us everything we ask for. Thankfully, that is just such a huge blessing that instead of giving us what we ask for, you actually give us what's better for us. <sighs> God, I just love this verse. I love this the power in it. Um, I love the reasoning behind it. You're coming into... A celebration the people are celebrating uh, their release of their their ancestors way back when in in Egypt uh, and there's a celebration and there's a celebration as you come into town riding on the colt but even then people aren't putting all the pieces together God help us to put all these pieces together help us to realize that our prayer time is not just a, an opportunity to come before you and ask for all the things we want but instead to give thanks, gosh, to give thanks for all of the incredible blessings you've given us, to ask for forgiveness for all the things that we have messed up on, and then bring before you the, the things of our heart. One of my favorite things that I love to pray to you, it's also my least favorite thing because of the results, but one of my favorite things to pray to you, God, is to cleanse me of my heart of everything you don't like and show me all the things I'm not seeing so I can change them. And it's a sincere prayer and you know it is. And part of the reason why I don't like praying that is because you will show me all the things that I'm missing. Um, but it's in those moments where I do know that I grow stronger uh, and deeper in our relationship. And so that ultimately is a good thing. So today, God, I pray for everyone listening to this video that that will become part of their, their prayers. God, I'm not really sure what your will is in this situation. Can you not only show me your will, but allow me to accept it and then show me the steps I need to take to make it happen with a great heart, not just a heart out of obedience, but with gratefulness and joy. In your son's name we pray. Amen.